Haddon is a very, very special place. It's full of atmosphere, full of beauty. The gardens are amazing. You can wander around the gardens and explore this extraordinarily beautiful and atmospheric place. And you may even spot a ghost. Haddon Hall is one of the oldest houses in the country. It was built as a Norman fort in the 12th century. Coming here is a bit like stepping back in time. It's very untouched. The house itself is, is a real rabbit warren because it was built over a number of centuries and sometimes the architecture doesn't actually fit together so there'll be staircases which go nowhere, little, little bridges in the, in the inside of rooms linking one side of the house to the other. Minstrel's gallery is full of old tapestries and dusty paintings. So as a child, it was amazing, exciting to explore. It's just like in a time warp and it's, they haven't spoilt it. It's just as it always was. And you can imagine people from all different ages walking through the gardens and through the hall and it's just magical, really. It's just so intricate and detailed that you can't just look at it once and say, oh, I got it, I have everything about it. You can spend yeah. hours just looking at every little detail about mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And it's just beautiful. This is history. All this history, yeah. You know, it all belongs together. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful mm -hmm. setting. It's gorgeous. I think it's a place that anybody would enjoy. Yeah. I think that, you know, if you've got a bit of time and you can sit and appreciate it on a good day, you'll get more out of it. But I think it is just stunning. There's probably nowhere quite like it. We have a beautiful medieval chapel that was enlarged when a lady called um, Juliana Pembrugger married into the family. We have the beautiful Great Hall that dates from her time as well. And then, of course, when the famous Dorothy Vernon took over here, she and her husband John built our beautiful long gallery. This room itself is one of my favourite spots. The long gallery built in about 1580, classic Elizabethan room. As a child, it was always amazing opening the door and walking in. You get extraordinary perspective and, and, and light. And, and we used to run up and down this all the time. Really. It has a fantastic atmosphere about it. it. It's meant to be very, very haunted, this room. But it's wonderfully light and it's full of character. It looks quite scary. It looks like a fortress or, or a castle, particularly in certain lights when it's great warmth to it. The hall itself stands on a little limestone outcrop, so it is raised above and we have to climb the steps to get there, making it much more castle-like in appearance than it would do otherwise. The surrounding land is all organic, so you'll see our lovely longhorn cattle grazing in the fields and perhaps some of the sheep and lambs as well. It was actually built during the Hundred Years' War, the bulk of it was, so it stood through the Wars of the Roses, all of the Tudor upheaval when Henry VIII was splitting with the church. We had huge changes in our chapel at that time. And then through the Elizabethan era, when again we had great changes. The Civil War didn't touch it at all because it wasn't the main family residence at that time. And most important to me, no one sat round the fire in the Georgian period and said, let's get Robert Adam to rebuild it. And so it stayed just as it was when the family moved out in about 1700 until the present day. The first thing I did was to commission a 30-year a, a restoration plan, so which we're working our way through as time progresses. We've caught up on most of the most urgent restoration that needed to be done when I took over. But the whole point about the house opening to the public is to contribute and pay for this restoration of the house. So, Every penny of money made from the house opening goes into restoration work on the house. Now, the house is open to the public throughout most of the summer, from April until October, seven days a week, May till September. And we try and provide a bit more of an experience to, to the public than just wandering around the house. We've recently restored the gardens, which are beautiful. So we try and entertain the public uh, as, as much as we can at the, at the weekends. Otherwise, it's just lovely to come during the week and just have it rather quietly to yourself. With few people, I think that's almost, almost the nicest bit about having to come here and explore the place on your own and, and soak in the atmosphere of it and wander around the garden. 
all else, Haddon Hall is very much a family home. Um, Lord and Lady Edward live here and they have twin sons, so we're safe for future generations. And we do get the feel as we come in in the morning to work that we're very much part of the family of Haddon Hall. We're very much looking forward to actually moving into the hall, which will be wonderful, which we hope to do in the next couple of years. And that will be a time of great discovery for everybody, for the family, for us, for the children. And I think um, a few bats might be displaced, which will be, <laughs> bedrooms will be cleared. But um, it's going to be a wonderful, exciting time for everybody and the house and the guides and the visitors. Mm -hmm. Many of our visitors describe Haddon as a hidden gem. It's very ancient and romantic and set within the stunning countryside of the Peak District National Park. But what makes Haddon, I think, so special is that it's been our family home for over 900 years. We have always welcomed visitors and really look forward to seeing you soon.